Now, let's take a look at the biggest meat-eating dinosaur ever. Or was it? Gigantosaurus carolinae is a species of theropod that is arguably up there with T-Rex and Spinosaurus in terms of carnivorous popularity. Yes, I'm saying Gigantosaurus because some people can say Dinonychus or Dinonychus or Diplodocus or Diplodocus and neither are wrong. And quite frankly, Giganotosaurus just sounds weird to me. With, it. with that being said, make sure you hang around to the end of the video because in that we're going to be looking at what kind of dinosaur this was, how it lived, and also if it really was the biggest meat-eating dinosaur. It was 1993 in the Bacon Badlands of the Neoken province of Patagonia, Argentina, when amateur fossil hunter Ruben D. Carolini spotted a huge tibia sticking out of the ground. Big enough that if it connected to more skeleton, he was going to need a hand getting it out of there. So he notified paleontologists Rodolfo Carraya and Leonardo Salgado, who organised an excavation. Two years later, the specimen was fully excavated, showing a 70% complete skeleton. In September of 1995, Giganotosaurus was fully described, making this dinosaur only three months younger than yours truly, though he has grown quite a bit taller. Giganotosaurus was also found to be a Carcharodontosaurid, being closely related to other giants like Mapusaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. Now the beds that Giganotosaurus was discovered in is known as the Candeleros Formation. This formation in Argentina was deposited during the early Cenomanian of the late Cretaceous, around 99 to 97 million years ago. Now this deposit shows an environment with at a glance, some fairly conflicting features. Now many signs of braided river systems have been found along with paleosols and silts deposited in swamp-like conditions. At the same time though, we see aeolian deposits, which are sand deposits made on dry land with wind acting as the current. Now for this, you need a lot of dry sediment as well as wide open spaces. For example, a desert which isn't really famous for its river and swamp systems. Speculating personally, I think it's possible that these meandering rivers were sourced from an endoric basin during a wet season, creating rivers and swampy areas in an otherwise arid environment. A modern comparison would be how the Okavango Basin behaves in the deserts of Botswana. Now this deposit has yielded many fossils over the years other than just Giganotosaurus. This includes things such as small mammals, frogs, lungfish, turtles, snakes, and quite a few dinosaurs, including several rebacosaur and titanosaur sauropods, several iguanodontids, alnachetri, ecrisinatosaurus, buetraptor, and the recently discovered jackapil. Ichnofossils also seem to hint at the existence of other large ornithopods as well as pterosaurs. And if you're curious to know what an ichnofossil actually is, I'll leave a link to the video for that. But enough of all that, you're here to find out how big this boy was. Now despite Gigantosaurus being one of the most complete giant theropods ever found, size estimates are still not exact. Rough estimates of this dinosaur fall between 12 to 30 meters or 39 to 43 feet long and around 11 to 13 feet tall. The trouble here is that there is a lot of disagreement about the size of the skull. Now it's mostly down to this discrepancy that a lot of paleontologists have refuted the claim that it was indeed bigger than T-Rex. Plus, it also depends on what you mean by a big. Despite other theropods like Gigantosaurus and Spinosaurus being potentially longer, we do know that T-Rex was likely the bulkiest and heaviest theropod. So it wouldn't have been as easy pickings as Jurassic World would have you believe. 
don't don't get me started on this guy. But why get this big in the first place? Well, whilst it had nothing on T-Rex's jaws, we do know that Gigantosaurus had a very powerful and an incredibly quick bite, even for a giant theropod. Now this, along with the giant size, would have helped Gigantosaurus take down a dinosaur that is thought to have been on the menu. Sauropods. As Mesozoic history has shown us, you do not mess with a fully grown sauropod. If you do, you better be pretty big or bring friends. Now we know that Gigantosaurus had at least one of these things. And to be fair, we don't have any evidence to say that it didn't hunt in packs any more than we have any evidence to say that it definitely did. But I might be getting carried away myself a bit here. Though the bite of this dinosaur was quick and powerful, the overall consensus is that Gigantosaurus was likely a generalist predator that probably fed on slightly smaller prey such as juvenile sauropods, which wouldn't have had parental protection much like turtles. Now some scientists have suggested that the prey of Gigantosaurus would have meant it would have had to pick up the pace a little bit estimating that it could have clocked in at around 30 miles an hour, which is incredibly fast for a theropod of this size. In summary, I do know that a lot of people have probably clicked on this video to find out more about the theropod that was bigger than T-Rex, but this claim is somewhat questionable and it definitely wasn't heavier. Besides, whether it was bigger or not, Gigantosaurus was so much more than that. Being a giant hypercarnivore in an environment that required it to be a dinosaur like no other. But what do you think? I'd love to read your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll even let you do what Jurassic Park fans do best and argue about the fights we see in the films, such as in Jurassic World Dominion. Ugh. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.